something I wanted to do, which I've not got around to, because I've done shaft tours, was really sort of show you my limited editions. And this isn't all of them here. Now, there are two levels. And I've shown some of them in specialised videos about Kerosina and Morrigan, small presses. And I need to reshoot the Morrigan one, because I watched it the other night. It was in the very early days of the channel, and it's absolutely terrible. So um, it's worth watching for the anecdotes and the voiceover. But the actual visuals are really bad. It's at the beginning of the channel when I was experimenting with a dreadful Chinese camera. So maybe we'll have a look at some of the limited editions. And, you know, limited editions, it's an interesting thing. These days, you get people like Subterranean who basically do a lot of reissues, hardly any original work. And they are nice books, but they're mostly aimed at collectors who've got bags of money who are sort of late to the party and you know and sometimes it's good to be late to the party i like to be slightly behind the curve myself with culture a lot of the times so i can't say i'm always the first person to pick on some up on something amazing you know i rely on other people as well we all do and you know mostly though they're doing you know stuff which have, has already been really big and people have missed out on particularly in fantasy and that's fine it's a good way of making money but to me a small press what a small press should really do is take some risks and find some stuff that nobody's willing to put out there and you know redo something special with it or to do a book by a writer who's established but who's a cult figure and do a book by them which isn't sort of you know the the average thing and this is this is a subterranean i'll just um, zoom in there and um, this is lewis shiner's heroes and villains and this is really really nice three short novels and a fable by lewis shiner now, if you don't know Lewis Shiner is, he's in Mirror Shades, the cyberpunk anthology. He kind of never repeats himself. He's a really good writer, never met him. And here are some of his novels. There's Deserted Cities of the Heart. Of course, that's a song by Cream. That was his second novel from the late 80s. And it's a double day first edition. And then his most celebrated and famous book is probably Glimpses. There, now, Glimpses is the gold book. And that's a story about a guy who discovers when he goes into a recording studio that he can access the tapes um, of the great unfinished albums of the 1960s and sort of get them out there. And it's, it's a great sort of homage and a love letter to rock and roll. So we'll have a look at a few of my limiteds now. And I'm squatting on the floor, so I do apologise if this is a little bit sort of ropey. So bear with me and I'm going to try and get this sorted out. And let's see right let's have a look is this going to work yeah that's that's going to work to a degree so there's my limited shelf and what you'll see here from left to right is all sorts of things and we'll kind of cherry pick some of the nicest ones now so we'll get stuck into it this is the skies discrowned by tim powers and this is an edition from Cahill, um, great small press. I don't know if they're still going. I don't think they are. And I've bought several of their books over the years. And this is a revised edition of one of Tim's early books, which was originally entitled Forsake the Sky. The Sty Sky is Discrowned. What a great title. And as you see, it's got an illustrated frontispiece there. Which, you know, is not my sort of thing. I, I don't really care that much about illustrations and side books. And as you see, this is the deluxe first edition of The Skies Discrowned. So it's a first this, because the true first is Forsake the Sky in paperback. I think it was a door, something like that. Uh, limited to 300 individually signed and numbered copies, signed by Tim Powers, Phil Parks, the artist, and James Blaylock the other California dreamer alongside Tim Powers and Jita, who does an introduction. So that's that. And um, I bought this fairly recently. And I remember my friend Graham bought one years ago and I thought, gosh, that's a really handsome book. So that's The Skies Discrowned. We may as well look at all sorts of things. Perhaps this will be a two-parter. This is Kem Nunn's Tijuana Straits, which is a crime novel or a mainstream novel. This is the let's see this is no exit press the uk limited edition this is actually fairly easy to pick up and quite cheap and tijuana straits is rather like no country for all men by cormac mccarthy and it's set around the world there's a bit of surfing in it because kem nun and it's kem k-e-m for mother not n for nothing kem nun his most famous book is a book called tapping the source 
which is a book about surfing, a crime novel about surfing. I know that sounds ridiculous, surf noir, but it's absolutely stunning. And there's a video about it in the early days of the channel. It's such a great book. It's amazing. It really is something special. Everybody should read Tapping the Sources. And I mean, if I ran um, Hollister, you know, the old Huntington Beach surfwear, I would do a Tapping the Source t-shirt, but they're not that cool, unfortunately. So there you go. Even though I've got loads of this stuff myself, I find it quite cozy. So this is Tawana Straits. So as I say, the plot is very similar to No Country for All Men, but it precedes it by some years. I actually think it's a better book um, a guy um, in Tawana Straits, he lives there on his own. He's kind of an environmentalist and he sees a woman running along being pursued by dogs. And there's something more than just dogs after her. And it's a great book. So I think it's in print. Check it out. If you like a good noir novel, if you like um, Cormac McCarthy, I'd say give it a try. Great American writer, Kem Nam. Um, while we're on the subject, we may as well do whatever's here. So there's going to be a bit of crying here. This is Charles Williford, Wild Wives, illustrated with photographs, contains two novels and a play in Research Press. Now, Research are a wonderful publisher run by a guy called V. Vale, and I'll pop a picture of him up in the video. And he lives in San Francisco and he's been publishing since, gosh, the 70s. He did Search and Destroy, the punk fanzine, the Bay Area punk fanzine. And um, I never met him. He's friends of friends of mine. And this is like a dos a dos chapter. So as you see, if I turn it over, sorry about the bag, I turn upside down. And this is High Priest of California, which for me is the purest noir novel ever. It's a crime novel that doesn't really have any crime in it. It's just about a guy who's really immoral and it's brilliant. So it's got Wild Wives, High Priest of California, and there's the play text of High Priest of California as well. And Charles Williford is my favourite crime writer. He's dead, sadly. And this is signed by him. And he was one of the Miami school. Um, he's kind of like Elmo Leonard, except he's miles, miles better, in my opinion. And had a checkered publishing history in the UK. Um, his books go in and out of print, um, but he really is the master. For me, the finest American crime pro stylist there's ever been. And I know that will offend people who are like Chandler and what have you. But for me, Williford is up there. Williford, Richard Stark, a.k.a. Donald A. Westlake and James M. Kane, they're my big guys. So that's that. And well done to Vale for publishing it. Fantastic stuff signed limited edition number as well finally for a bit of crime i'm going to show you one more and um, this is edward bunker's dog eat dog in no exit press and edward bunker played mr blue in reservoir dogs and um, there's a promotional postcard and i'm just going to pop the camera down a minute to fish it out of the bag and i'll tell you the story all about it now i was given this by ian mills the publisher at no exit press back when it came out when i was running a mail order um, division of a big book selling company and here it is and this was bunker's last novel i seem to recall and it's not my favorite one i do think it's minor compared to the earlier ones the thing with bunker is interesting his first novel is outstanding his second novel is brilliant the third one is very, very good, and this one, not so much. And this is a heist novel, Armed Robbery, Three Men, Two Convictions, One Last Score, No More Chances. And let's have a look at this. Um, very plain livery and bunker. Um, was a career criminal. He wrote his first novel, um, the very wonderful No Be Sophias, in prison. And he was in prison for armed robbery, for pimping, for fraud, theft, all sorts of things. He was in and out of prison a lot. And then when he came out, he had written this novel. Oh gosh, there's another one inside. So there we go. And basically he sort of reformed, reformed through art. His first novel, as I say, Nobody Sophia's was published and it was made into a film with Dustin Hoffman called Straight Time, which is really good. And when you read this novel, what comes across to you is the fact that really you understand why criminals 
are unrepentant and why they reoffend. Because when you're out on that limb and you're in the probation system, you know, you, you can't you can barely have a cigarette or have a drink or, or talk to a friend without getting into trouble and into the slammer again. And, and you really need to begin to understand the ire and the outsider thing against society. And and Bunker, brilliant, brilliant writer, great prison writer in the tradition of people like Jenny. And he then went on to become an advisor for Hollywood on how you shot crime scenes, how crime really worked and operated. Um, there's a character in Michael Mann's film Heat, played by John Voight, who looks like Bunker and is based on Bunker. And, you know, he was a, he was a great guy. And as I say, he's, a, he's met Mr. Blue in Reservoir Dogs and um, fantastic stuff. So that's a signed numbered limited edition of his fourth and final novel. Great stuff. More Bradbury, Harlan Ellison, Michael Moorcock, K.W. Jeter, R.A. Lafferty, Brian Aldiss, John Brenner, D.G. Compton, Gene Wolfe. Now, you will have seen most of these. As you see, they've got M's or K's on them. The M's are Morrigan. The K's are Kerosene. If you want to see more of those, watch my Kerosene video. Here's another P.S. Here's Brian Aldiss's Sanity and the Lady. Um, with the introduction by Ian R. McLeod. Isn't that lovely? Absolutely beautiful. Um, and I've got a few things signed by Brian because I met him a few times. This is copy number 310. There you go. Absolutely gorgeous. P.S. of the lovely books. Um, another press who are kind of really good and they've done lots of great work. Um, and I wish I could buy more of their books. I can. Their postage is quite expensive is what I would say. But then, you know, it is a small thing. And it's run by Ian Wicks. And that's Newcon. Newcon do lots of good anthologies. They do lots of British SF. And this is The Push by Dave Hutchinson, who is a contemporary favourite of mine. And as you see, it's a straightforward SF novel with a spaceship on the cover. Except with Dave, nothing's really straightforward. And if you haven't read him, do read Europe in Autumn which I think is his keynote book, which is brilliant. And I did an event with Dave back in about 2017. Very cool guy indeed. Um, and that's typically what New Con do. They publish all sorts of people. Um, Tom Toner, Nina Allen, um, almost everybody you can think of from British SF, except me, probably because I've never submitted anything, even though um, Ian once said I was very welcome to do so. And they're not really taking submissions at the moment. And I don't have anything ready, but I do have an idea. If I can get the views up and get the money coming in a bit more, maybe I can take some time off from this and then, you know, do some writing. We'll see what happens. So that's Dave Hutchinson. I'll show you another Dave Hutchinson. This is the New Compress Imagining series. This is volume 10. Sleeps with Angels and this is short stories. And there's a whole load of those deliveries like that. And they're great little series. There's a Nina Allen one and the various other writers say so that's volume 10 so that's rather nice as well i'm going to pop this down again to see what else i can show you and what do we have then this is again this there's a lot of ps and new con in this because there's they do a lot of novellas and short books and this is some um, tim leban rhyme which is like a generation starship story and rhyme refers to the rhyme of the ancient mariner and this is a very sort of dark sort of book full of regret and it's like somebody makes one mistake and it, it really does have huge implications for people on board the starcraft and tim leban he's written an awful lot and um he's done some good stuff you know he's done some routine work but you know he's a jobbing writer but he's done some very fine work as well and i really like this book i recommend it so that's one to watch out for rhyme i don't think it's um and often um ps will do trade paperbacks and new can do paperbacks as well so you know do check their websites out they're really good this is um a subterranean book which i haven't read yet silverberg emperor and the mauler a recent work with a um, very handsome jacket so there you go i've got that to read very very nice indeed you can see why people like um subterranean because they are beautiful but as i say they don't do a lot of original work it's mostly reprints so that's a rare example um there was a previous version of this but it was abridged i think i think this is the first the uh, true sort of um full edition Another book by a online mate of mine somebody i've never met i hope to one day we both contributed to um to Deep Ends, the Ballad Anthology, um, great guy Paul de Filippo, that's Aota, and I've not read that yet. My favourite book by Paul is a book 
also published by P.S. called A Roadside Bodhisattva, which is a mainstream novel, which is really, really great. It's a coming of age story and I absolutely loved it. Fantastic stuff. So that's typical of some of the stuff that they do. And moving onwards, we have another Dave Hutchinson from Newcom this time. And this is Nomads. There we go. So, you know, they do these great little books. There's a novella, short story collections, the things that, you know, the mainstream publishers won't pick up because everybody wants to have books really long. These days, oh, it's not very big. Never mind the width, feel the quality. OK, the novella, the short story, some of the finest things in SF come from those shorter forms. And Dave is, is really good at them. So that's a really great one as well. And going back to Tim Leban, you can see a Harlan Ellison in there, see? Then this is one of my favourite Ellison books. I have shown this on the channel before. I think I put it in my top 10 obscure horror novels for Halloween. This is Berserk by Tim Leban, which is really, really great horror novel. Pick it up if you can. Um, a scary cover there. Look at that. Ooh. And then this is someone I've shown you fairly recently. This is the signed um, limited edition of Oops. Not of Oops. Good grief. Of Harlan Ellison's Medea, Harlan's World, which is a shared world anthology. Very handsome, Fantasia Press. I got that from Cold Tennage Books. Great stuff. And most of what you see here in the corner, again, is pretty much um, more Kerosina. And there's a bit of Morrigan. And I mean, this is an interesting Zeising, Mark Zeising. Um, the book dealer and publisher from the States. I've um, never met Mark. He's done some great work. He's done published people like Kim Stanley Robinson. This is a collection of A. A. Atanasio short stories called Beast Marks. Isn't that a cover to die for? And let's have a close look inside this. This is signed. Uh, most of these are signed, of course, as they're first because they're all limits. They're first editions or first this. Because if you reprint something, you put extra material in to alter the text, you know, or Add some in an essay, introduction, what have you, and signed by Atanasio, number 12 of 250, numbered and signed, 1,500 copies. So there were 1,250 trade copies for bookshops and introducers, authors, um, illustrators signed off. Really, really nice. Isn't that great? OK, as I say, this is turning into a bit of a PS and Newcon jam. And that's fine because, you know, they're good guys and they deserve our respect. And, you know, if you're if you're sort of at entry level, you've never dipped your toe into British small presses. These are the people to go for. This is Eric Brown, The Extraordinary Voyage of Jules Verne. Lovely, isn't that beautiful? Introduction by Ian Watson. Eric Brown, um, the first of the Interzone writers to break out. First of the Gene Rats to break out of Interzone into sort of mainstream book publishing. Time Lapse Man, other stories, I think was his first book. I think Eric's a minor figure. He's entertaining, he's light, he's a good craftsman. Never blew my mind, but I have read about eight books by him, so he must be doing something right. And <laughs> I'm sure he's a nice chap. Reminds me of Michael Coney, and he's a big fan of Michael Coney. And I love this one, actually. This was great. And um, as you see, it's a voyage extraordinaire, Jules Verne. Then, probably my favourite book that I own from P.S., or certainly one of them, this is The Human Front by Ken McLeod, which uh, with interest by Ian Banks, and I absolutely love this. I, I did an event with Ken back in 2017. What a nice guy. Scotsman, incisive, hard SF, and this is an alternative history novel about flying saucers, and it's great, and it's red or dead, no communism, Soviets, you know, it's really, really something. Great book, The Human Friend. I love it. My And it's still my favourite Ken. It was the first one I read, and I've read it many times, and I really like it. So The Human Friend, so it's a great one. The Flying Saucer is kind of like a taboo subject in SF or Wars. It was like the thing where you didn't want to write about it because people thought people who saw flying saucers were nuts, and they, and they didn't want to be associated with that. So it's rather like the thing I said about sci-fi, you know, and SF. So, you know, you don't write about flying saucers because, you know, people will think you're just a crazed cultist and, and SF didn't want to be associated with that. That's changed. That's changed. And my one published SF story is a flying saucer story, or is it? And um, it's in Deep End's 
2018, I think it's in. It's called Sorcerer, Sorcerer Occupant. Uh, it's not much copy notes. <laughs> this is miles better, as you'd expect. So check it out. So I think we're moving towards the end of this video now because the camera battery is running out. Um, but at least it'll be in HD. Um, Andy Warhol's Dracula by Kim Newman which was later published as the first part of one of the Anno Dracula books, one of the later ones. And the full-length novel which came out of this, I wasn't so keen on. It was good fun. It's a bit of a romp. But this, I absolutely loved. And, you know, I know a lot about Warhol. He was one of my idols as a kid. And one of my favourite books growing up was From A to B and Back Again, The Philosophy of Andy Warhol, which is one of the books that made me. It's going to be in my one of the books that made me part two video. And... It's got a lot about punk and Warhol and New York and the whole New York underground thing, which is very much my jam. And I absolutely love this. And Kim, of course, he's a cool guy. Never met him. I'd love to meet him. I could probably talk to him for hours and, you know, the old waistcoat and stuff. And he's, he's obviously such a great guy. And I love his commentaries on DVDs and Blu-rays. Who doesn't? So this is great. Andy Warhol's Dracula. And of course, Andy Warhol produced a film called Andy Warhol's Dracula a.k.a. Blood for Dracula, and he's another one called Andy Warhol's Frankenstein, a.k.a. Flesh for Frankenstein, except because they were actually directed by Sir Paul Morrissey, who worked for Warhol at the factory. Got a bit of Adam Roberts, um, Park Polar in PS. Very, very, very nice. I haven't read that one yet, actually. I got a complete collection of firsts of um, Adam's works. Um, Jupiter Magnified by Adam Roberts. Very, very nice. I see we're getting some glare here because he's covered with laminate as you see to protect them some i have read saint rebor in imaginings and these are all sort of signed limited editions or numbered what have you and some more adam as you can see i'm an adam net the man who would be cling which was bizarre and i loved it and the lake boy which was even more bizarre, and I loved that as well. So this is the thing. These small presses, they allow writers to, to have their head and to do flaky things and original things and experiment in public, which is great. And of course, most of them is just a few hundred copies, so there's not much money made. It's done out of love for the writer, the book, and, you know, for the, for the, the sort of hardcore reading fandoms of these, um, of these writers. So it's really nice. And um, here's somebody I like as well, Nicholas Royal. And this is The Enigma of Departure, Nicholas Royal, horror, mainstream writer, um, short stories are his speciality, really, really great guy. There's a video about him on the channel, do watch it, because most people haven't and they should. Um, very entertaining. And there's an interesting story about his identity. So watch the video about Nicholas Royal, watch it all the way through and you'll find an interesting thing out about his identity. So there you go. Then we've got another Silverberg, look at this. This is a signed... Silverberg, Lion Time and Timbuktu in full leather from Axolotl Press. And um, this is a, a sort of fantasy or SF story set in Africa. I have read it. I felt it was quite minor, but the, cho the chance of a leather bound signed Bob just had to be done. We're coming to the end of this um, video now. And this is only in part one. Part two will come again. And here's a beautiful book from PS. And this is Streaking by Brian Stableford, with introduction by Storm Constantine, who I met once at a little con in Bristol, and she was lovely, and she died shortly after. What a shame, such a nice lady. It's a very attractive goth lady, and she was just fantastic. You know, Graham, um, the other grumpy old man, he's a big, big fan of Storm, and we went along and, and loved it. It was great. Now, streaking, now back in the 70s in Britain, streaking meant pulling your clothes off until you were naked, and running um, naked down a street or onto a sport field or what have you in public and it was a bit of a thing in the 60s and 70s because you'd get arrested for public order offense and there was a famous streaker when i was a when i was quite a young man called erica Rowe, and she was a well-built lady she was very buxom and she pulled her top off at a rugby match she was wearing jeans i remember very fine um, figure of a lady if, I, if you don't mind me saying and she ran out on the pitch because she was enjoying the game so much. And she became, you know, famous for a while because, you know, she was very attractive. And, you know, people um, people loved it. It was, it was a lark and what have you. How different to now. People have very different ideas about these things now. And streaking, in this sense, is not about taking your clothes off this. It's about a family who have 
these amazing mutant powers to do with luck. So they have a streak of luck. So it's about gambling. Great, great idea and beautiful book. And this is an example of, um, there was a slipcase edition. This is um, the standard signed limited. So 200 numbered slipcase copies and 500 trade hard covers. So this is one of the trade ones. The slipcase one was signed by Storm Constantine as well, but streaking. Great title, great idea. Love the novel. Fantastic. What a beautiful design. Going to finish off this tranche with The Beasts of Lake Off in New Compress by my mate Tom Toner, who's appeared on the channel several times. So there's a bit of limited edition action for you. There will be more to come. We look at the back layer. And as I say, I haven't gone into some of these very much because I've either shown them in other videos. So if you want to watch the Morrigan and Kerasina videos, do so. Because you'll also learn a lot about small press publishing. So this is Outlaw Bookseller signing out for now. Hope you enjoyed that and limited editions number two coming up at some point.